Okay. <clears throat> Swamp Yankee. Yeah, I'm going to uh, try to make a video today of how to clean a chain from a chainsaw. Um, one of my hobbies over the years has been sharpening things. Uh, you know, I sharpen hand tools. Uh, I have a scissor sharpener. I sharpen the chainsaws. The chainsaws was more of a business than anything. I used to sharpen chains for um, the local tree warden and his group and things like that. Um, so I've been doing it a long time. But the one thing that I had the most trouble coming to grips with was how to clean the chain before you grind it. And that's an important part of the sharpening process because if it's not clean and free of oil and grime, then the heat don't dissipate. You end up burning the chrome. Um, if you don't know the these tips on these chains, the cutting edges are chromed. And it's a very thin industrial chrome, but that's what makes it have a long life if you don't hit anything with it, of course. Um, but if it's not clean and you burn that off, it'll cut after you're done sharpening it, but it won't stay sharp for very long. It wears, the chrome is what gives it its endurance. So I had trouble keeping the chains clean and cool while I was grinding. And finally I came up with a solution that cleans the chains pretty good, and that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, so let's get started. Now this chain, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this because I'm not watching what the film is doing right now. But you can see it's dirty. It's got a lot of cellulose that, you know, comes from the trees. It's, you know, it's baked onto the tops of the uh, cutters. And that's the worst thing in the world. It not only won't dissipate the heat, but that grime clogs up your grinding wheel and it doesn't grind cleanly. And that's another reason why it will overheat. So we're gonna we're gonna clean them today. The solution that I use is really simple. When I ran across it, I was really delighted because I had tried all kinds of different industrial cleaners and even a small ultrasonic cleaner, and none of them really worked that well. Simply Wesley's bleach white for the white walls on your car. It's very caustic. Um, it cleans really good. It's good for this kind of uh, cleaning because this isn't an oil base grime that you want to get off of there. Uh, the oil comes off easily. It's the cellulose from the tree that gets baked on. Uh, it's very tough to get off sometimes. So, Wesley's bleach white. What I do is I simply put it in a bucket. First of all, safety. You want to wear gloves with this stuff. You want to wear safety glasses. You want to be careful. This stuff is pretty rough. You wouldn't want to get any in your eyes or on your body or in your hand. So, safety glasses and gloves. Now this soaking process, it actually will do a very good job in only 10 minutes. Lots of times I'll let it soak longer than that. The longer you let it soak to, you know, to a degree, it will clean easier. Um, but I find that anything after 10 minutes, um, it cleans really good. I got a little brush. That'll be part of the video, you'll see. But you can see this is pretty grimy, and this solution is pretty old. It lasts a long time. This is about ready to be changed. Uh, you know, I don't think you can see it in there, but it's 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 really it's black and it's grimy. There's a lot of dirt in there from all the chains that clean, but it still works. But like I say, I'm about ready to change this out. So we just put that in there, and we let it soak for about 10 minutes. While that's soaking, um, I'm not a, you probably know by now, <laughs> this is not something I do all the time. It's not something I'm looking for a lot of hits on and, you know, try to make any money on it. I guess there's a way of doing that, but I don't understand it. And I'm really not interested in that. What I'm trying to do is I've had a lot of questions over the years, different people buying the sharpeners. Now you can buy them pretty cheap now. I have a, an old one I've had for 30 years. It's an Oregon. It's a it's, you know, it's a very good shop and I like it. I haven't never had any trouble with it. Of course, now it'll break. But um, they are available and much more affordable to Joe homeowner that just uses his chainsaw in the fall. You know, rather than send it out and have somebody shop in it and pay all that money, he can buy a little shop and try it himself. Most of them fail. I've had several people, friends of mine, that come over asking advice. And I try to give them the best advice I can. But when they find out that there's a little bit more to it, um, they don't make out so well, but 
having said that, there has been some successful people too. And that's why I'm making this video is I'd like to explain some of the things. If this comes out okay and I'm happy with it, I might do additional videos on the sharpening technique that I use, um, some of the angles, um, the, the depth of the cut, you know, when I adjust the rakers on the chain, things like that that would help out the normal guy that uh, picked up um, a $30 sharpener at Home Depot. So let's let that bake for a while or just soak and I'll come back in a few minutes. Okay, let's uh, clean up this chain here. Kind of a rainy day here in New England. So I thought it was a good time to do this. I've uh, been telling some of my friends and been thinking about it for quite a while. I've been wanting to do it. So today was a good day to do this. This is just an old chain that I don't even know where it goes to. Custom might have left it or something that's never been cleaned, I don't know. But I don't know if you can see it. It's already started to look a little bit better just from the few minutes in that solution. So what I do is I have a, just an all-purpose brush. And I just give it a little brush. Yeah, that one's got some tough stains on it. We might have to put that back in for another few minutes. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's see if you can see it. See, it looks a whole lot better. But there's still a coating of grime. I can still see it. I'm going to brush it off a little bit more. But you want to get this as clean as you can. For all the reasons I was talking about a few minutes ago. Oh yeah, these are cleaning up a little bit better. Oh yeah, that must have just been some kind of a extra tough bit of cellulose on there or something. If this sits in here for a couple of hours, you basically just be able to take it one brush like this and it'll just fall right off. That Wesley's is really a, a good cleanup. How I realized that it would work good is one day I was cleaning up my lawnmower or John Deere that I have, and it had a lot of grass stains on the mower deck and in the wheels. And I was trying different things, it wasn't working that good. I happened to have some of that Wesley's in a spray bottle. So uh, I sprayed it and the dang uh, grass stains just started melting right off. So there's another good little tip. If you want to clean up your lawnmower or anything like that. Anything that's, I mean it works on grease, but its strong point is, you know, grass stains, anything cellulose that comes from your garden or your lawn or your trees. It works really good. As you can see, I keep going on about it. I'm going to take a quick look and see if I missed one or if there's one that's a little tougher to get clean than the others. I would spend 15, 20 minutes or more trying to clean chains in the past because I'm very conscious of how clean they are when I shop them because I want them to last for my customers. And myself, I, I heat with wood, so I shop in my own shading. So I've got several chainsaws that I have to maintain. That yeah, looks pretty good. After that, I have a second tub. This is just water. Um, when I first fill it, uh, the sink that I fill it from has hot water, so I use hot water. That seems to rinse it a little bit uh, better. But the cold water works fine. I use this once it gets cold. I don't change the water until it gets really dirty. But if you're the type of person who's going to sharpen a couple of chains and then you're not going to do it for quite a while and you're filling it up, put hot water in there. It rinses it really good. Then when I'm done, 
I simply put it, what I have is I just have a towel over here. I put it on a towel, I wrap it up, take, you know, dries it up, and I can, you know, take and, and, and shop it immediately. I don't know if you can see the difference on there. You, you know, even the sides look cleaner. They haven't got that grime on there. And that's ready for sharpening. Just let that towel soak up some of the water. And then the last thing, once you do this, you have to realize that, of course, along with all the dirt that this takes off, it also takes off all the oil that's on the chain. So if we weren't if we weren't going to use it right away and put oil on there again and left it sitting around like sometimes you do two or three or in my case I give them to customers they might have them there for months before they use them it would rust up pretty quickly so what I do take a simple shopping bag put them in the bag and I have a little spray bottle full of mystery Marvel mystery oil um, you can get that anywhere but you don't have to use that any kind of oil WD-40 will work um, whatever you've got hanging around you just want to get some oil on there so that it doesn't rust up and I just give it a shot in there get it covered and that's ready to go of course I don't oil it until after I sharpen it but I wanted to demonstrate that because that's an important part of it especially if you're not going to use it as I said right away um, you certainly wouldn't oil it before you ground it. You want to you get it on the grinder, do the shop, and get that all done. And um, when you're done, just oil it up so it don't go bad on you. Um, I think that's about it. And as I said before, if you like this, you think it's informative, and you like a little more information, um, I'm no guru, but uh, over the years I've gotten a pretty good reputation for sharpening chainsaws to, uh, you know, everybody kind of... You know, likes my sharpening, I guess you'd say. So if there's anything I can do to help, I'd be glad to help. Thanks.